أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم يا رجل سلطان العلي الحمد لله الذي أنزل على أبده الكتاب وحنا يجي الله يواجه أقمده سبحانه وتعالى وشكره وهو أخل حمد وثانا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا وده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده رسول ومصطفى اللهم صل وسلم على ذكر رسولك محمد وأهله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين وثانك الله أمامي for everything. I feel that in hearing my uh, voice, I feel hear that I feel that we are on a loudspeaker, stereo, and that mighty eyes are watching us. This is the holy month of Ramadan. This is the month of the Ummah, of the nation, of the community of beloved Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And his nation, who is his nation? His nation is Jews, Christians, Muslims. Atheists, Buddhists, black people, white people, red people, yellow people, brown people, all kinds of people. Because Allah Almighty sent the Old Testament, the laws of Moses, and I'll be pleased with him. That was for a particular people. Allah sent the purified pages of Abraham, that was for a particular people. Allah Almighty sent the Psalms of David. That was for a particular people. He sent the Gospel of Jesus. That was for a particular people. But when he sent the Quran, it was for all people. It was for those, all that went before him, because he is the seal of the message. And Allah says, I've completed my favor on you. And he is the seal of the prophets. No, Allah says, I'm not sending any more prophets. I'm not sending any more books. I'm completing my favor on you. This is what we have to understand. <laughs> that of his nation, they are prophets. They are saints. They are believers. That in the time was in the time of Moses, in the time of Abraham, in the time of, Je uh, of David, of the time of Jesus. They wanted to be in the time of the seal of the prophets. Because Allah Almighty has said to beloved Muhammad Sallallahu when he made his ascension into divine presence. And the prophet said, I want this for my nation. And they said, they have to be like you. I will give them what I gave all of those previous nations, all of the blessings that I gave to Moses, all of the blessings that I gave to Abraham, all the blessings I gave to Daud, all the blessings I gave to Suleiman, all the blessings I gave to Jesus, I will give to your people if they're going to be like you. So this is the gold mine of the end of times. These are the times of mysteries and wonders. These are the golden years. And this is why Shaitan is having, making havoc now. Now, all the Shaitans are locked up. All of them are locked up. This is the opportunity 
that Allah Almighty is bringing about His will. And no matter where someone is thinking, where they, what they're doing, whatever they're believing, whatever partners they're sending them to Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty is saying that I will bring them all together. To us, it appears to be impossible. We look at ourselves and we say, well, you know, first of all, I'm having a problem dealing with the devil in me. And there are 7 billion people on the planet with their devils. So our mentality is looking at the current events and saying, how in the world are we are going to deal with this? How, when they say these scriptures, how, and how, 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 how is this going to happen? Seventy-one different sects of Jews, seventy-two different sects of Christians, seventy-three different sects of Muslims. Why so many sects? They're using the Old Testament. There are many sects from the Old Testament, many sects from the New Testament, many sects from the last, the seal, the last testament, the Quran. Shaitan has done a job on the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi Got us divided and conquered and whipping everybody's hind pots. Everybody's hind pots. Except those who he has no authority on, except for those whom Allah Almighty's grace is on, they know who they are and whose they are. If you don't know where you are, you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, you may be anything or anybody or be any place and not know where you are, thinking that you're home. We lose, we use very little of our brain power, very little of our physical power, no spiritual power. No spiritual power. We don't even know what spiritual power is. If we read about spiritual power in the Old Testament, New Testament, Quran, we only associate it with prophets, with Moses when he parted the Red Sea, or when Jesus, when he brought people back from the dead or healed them, or when Prophet Abraham wasn't, wasn't burned in the fire. Do you think that that is the extent of Allah Almighty's power? Parting the Red Sea, bringing somebody from the dead, bringing the table spread from the heavens, do you think? That that is the extent of Allah Almighty's power. This is why Allah Almighty has always ordered humanity to fast. Why to fast? All the nations, Moses' nation, Jesus' nation, Abraham's nation, Suleiman's nation, Ishmael's a nation, all of their nations had to fast. Because Shaitan lies on the straight way. And he seduces us through that part of us that's connected to this world. But that's not all the extent to us. We use excuse all the time. Well, I'm only human. That's why I did that. The devil made me do that. I'm only human. You're not only human. You're not only human. That's why Allah orders us to fast so we may realize that we're not just human. We're souls and bodies. Yes, our bodies are in need of this planet's sustenance. This planet's environment. If you went on the moon and was on the moon, you would need a suit to put on and go on the moon to keep you from floating out in space. You would need a gravity suit on. You get back into the ship, you take it off. It's not you, it's the suit. Now we're wearing a human suit and we're blaming everything, our whole existence. We're putting all of our eggs in one basket and saying, I'm only human Therefore, I have been ex I'm excused to do 
as I like to do. I'm excused to fornicate. I'm excused to take drugs. I'm excused to take uh, be crazy. I'm excused not to follow guidance. I'm excused to do this because I'm only human and the devil made me do it. A lot threatens us. This is why we need to read Quran. Not just during Ramadan. We need to know the words of Allah Almighty. What are the words of Allah Almighty? The words of Allah Almighty is the order of our souls in print. That's why when you know who you are, you know who you are. So when you read the Quran, you see yourself, you see where you are. The Quran only reflects you. It is the mentality that all the prophets had in their relationship with Allah Almighty. That's how they communicated with Allah Almighty. Through revelation. Not with their naps, not with their isms, not with their schisms, not with their own understanding. Because we're lost with our own understanding because we didn't create ourselves. You have to use the language and apply the language to the creator, the one that created us. This is why Allah Almighty says, speak in a language that they understand. This is why we cannot say anything that Allah Almighty is not saying to us. If you go and read, you'll see that everything we're saying is what Allah Almighty has said. This is just a tafsir or commentary because Allah says, speak in a language they understand. They understand when they get their butt kicked because they did something they weren't supposed to do. And they know when they stop that, they don't get continue to get their butt whipped like that. So you got to speak in a language that the people understand. When you don't understand where you are, you don't understand who you are. If you don't understand who you are, then you may be anywhere doing anything, anytime. Going into mosques, going into churches, churches, going to synagogues, going to temples, and still not knowing, still getting a butt kicked inside and outside, because you don't know who you are. Why are you there? Allah makes it so plain to us. That's why Allah Almighty is so merciful to us. And that's why Allah orders us to fast during the month of Ramadan. First 10 days being mercy. Allah's mercy reaches us. Just think if we didn't have any mercy on us. There was a very powerful Muslim and he was doing all kinds of things and he was praying and he was fasting and he was making hajj and he was doing all the sunnahs and he had his mishwak, he had his turban, he had his stove on. He was doing everything. And when the angel of death took him, they said, how do you want to be judged? By your deeds or by Allah's mercy? He said, by my deeds. And as he was falling into the hellfire, he said, your mercy! <laughs> We're all sinners. But Allah's mercy is Ramadan. It's heat. It burns off the sins out of us. Like we make voodoo, we make a voodoo. You're washing those sins coming off your your arm, your your your, your elbows. You wash them off. Sins are coming out your mouth. Put in your nose is coming out. You know, put on your face. Sins are coming off from your face. Washing your feet. Sins are coming off your feet because places we walked in there were sins. Things we looked at were sins. Things we said there were sins. Things that we were smelling and put in our nose were sins. Things that we heard it were sins. So the voodoo represents washing off the sins. Allah is merciful. But Allah doesn't leave it to imagination. Allah says, I'm always going to be have among you guidance. When we came from the prophet of promises, Allah says, I'm always going to give you guidance so you may keep your promise. The promise comes in the person of someone. That help comes always in the person of someone. Allah is always with the servants. He was with a bush when Moses went to the mountain. Allah was with the bush. 
Then again, on a Friday, when Moses was looking for a law to visit him, there was an old man that came that they gave no hospitality to and sent them off. And the law says, I'm always with my servants. You sent me away. I'm always with my servants. When I look into their hearts, I see me. Law says the heavens and the earth were so weak, the mountains were so weak, they couldn't carry me. The heavens were so weak, they couldn't carry me. But the heart of the believer, the softness of the believer, could carry me. Law says that. Right. So I'm with those who can carry me. They are humble people. They create the havoc around them. And they're in control of it. Don't think they're not aware of us. Whatever it takes for us to be guided or to realize or to be repent, that's what we go through. If we got to go through the burning sands, if we got to have our nose shoved into to the mud or go through hell, they allow that. So we may come out and be pure people. They do that. They do that. Law's servants do that. That's why Law Almighty says, for my servants, through their involuntary acts of worship and love for me, I become their eyes, their ears, their hand, their tongue. Anyone harms them, I harm. Law, say, Law don't say, that doesn't say, I'm going to send them on. Law says, I'm going to harm you, harm them, I'm going to harm you. If they feel any distress in their heart, from our bad behavior, we got it coming. Any way, shape, or form, it's open season on us. Everything curses us. The heavens curse us. The earth curse us. All insects, all animals curse us. We know what it is to be cursed. We know what it is to be doing bad. We know it. We know it. But Allah Almighty always have those who always keep their post. They don't always keep their post. Shaitan never can post up on them. That's a basketball term. Somebody post up on you and block you from getting to the basket to get a rebound or follow up a shot. Shaitan posts us right on out the game and then we lost. Wait a minute, what game am I in? If you're not scoring and you're not getting the ball, getting access to the play, you out of the game. You don't have no recognition, don't nobody respect you, nothing respect, don't nobody know you. Then we start turning to wine women in song, wine men in song, we start self-medicating because we lost. Shaitan says, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You, you deserve it. You know you deserve it. You work hard. You come to con man. But Shaitan says, look, don't give me no bad rap. rap. I just whispered to you. You can't keep blaming me. You did it. I had no power over you. And we go over that over and over again. But we are fortunate that we've made it into Ramadan. How did it not? We made it into Ramadan. Shabir! Allah says that those who are fasting, there's a best special gate in paradise that only fasters can reach. Allah doesn't even, when they, when they pass away, they're not even questioned. They go right, it's like somebody picking you up at the airport, taking you somewhere, red carpet all to where you're going. You ain't got to worry about the hassle and ambassador of somebody messing your activities up. But we must be disciplined. And don't lose our minds. Don't let Shaitan cheat you. My Sheikh man, Allah gave him higher, higher rank. Sheikh Nazim Allah raised his rank higher and higher and higher. He used to tell us all the time. He said, there's a special flight, flight, a flower in, each, in, in, in India. But there are scorpions and snakes around it. Each thing has its purpose. Not that a scorpion or a snake... It's bad. It's with how you respond to it that makes it bad. As you approach it, if you are wild in your ego, then they feel you're a threat. They attack you. But if you're one of those whom Allah's grace is upon, 
and you're not setting up partners to Allah Almighty. You're not letting Shaitan post up on you, but you're posted on your post. You're able to go and take the fragrance of that flower to give you the power of attraction, give you a beauty. Allah don't create nothing ugly. We become ugly. If you look at somebody, that's a, uh, <laughs> believe me, Allah didn't create them like that. They became ugly by their character, their behavior. Shaitan was one time seen. Everybody could see him. But he became so ugly and so dark that Allah had to hide him. You would throw up to see him. He wouldn't be effective with you because you see that ugly thing, you would run from him. But now Allah Almighty veiled him. But he can approach us. He's a jinn. He can approach. Some people can see jinn. Some people can see angels. All of us have that capability, that ability, but we are blocked by our own selves, our own ego. If we have, if we set our parties to Allah Almighty. Why would Allah give us light and guidance if we're saying I'm Allah? This is one sin Allah says He will not forgive. Setting up partners to Him. Allah's only enemy is our ego. Because once you get your ego in check, your desires, your ego, this world, and Satan has no effect on you. At all. So Ramadan gives you an opportunity to, re came to, to reclaim the position that Adam had when the angels bowed down to him. That's our reality. Who believes it? Who believes it? Fornicating, drinking wine, taking pills, uh, lying, stealing, killing. For what? And you know what? You may say that if Allah Almighty said to us, okay, if you were Allah, what would you do? Well, I stopped killing, I had the poor people get rich and all that, and I, and I wrong. It's the wrong answer. Everything is perfect. Why is it perfect? Because everything is cause and effect. It is bringing about the perfection of the cause and effect activity. That's perfection. Everything has its destination. Everything has its cause for doing what it does. If you hit a bell, you get a sound. That's a cause and effect. You light a match, the fire comes on. You hit somebody, they want to hit you back. You throw water in the air, it comes and hit the ground. It's a cause and effect. It is perfection. It is a perfected action. So everything is in, perfect, is in, in, in a perfected way. Everything is perfected. It's just that we're not perfected. We're seeing everything cross-eyed. You don't think Allah Almighty <laughs> can control shaitan, can make everything... Uh, to our perfection, but if we make it to our perfection, it won't be to his perfection. This is what we don't understand. And that's why those people whom their hearts are connected to their Lord through the Rasul, they see everything perfected. That's why many things happen, they just keep on moving. They don't get involved because they don't interfere with the law of Almighty's will. See, we keep interfering with the law Almighty's will. And that's why we get posted out the game. We get taken out the game. Because we don't have no support. If you could ever be, have the opportunity of being around those who are supported by the law Almighty, you would be astonished. A lot of subtle subtleties. subtleties. They have a love to their hearts that we don't have. But, they come to us to give us, give us what they have. Because that's our inheritance. As long as we are setting up partners to Allah Almighty, why should Allah Almighty support us? Would you support someone who was against you? Because when Allah Almighty created the ego, he told it to go forward, it came back. He told it to go back, it came forward. Allah says, who am I? The ego says, I am me and you are you. That's like another God. Okay, you God over there, I'm God over here. I'm God down here, you God up there. 
That's what Pharaoh, that's the Pharaoh. That's Shaitan's mentality. You take that out, you're going to say, Lie that Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. So when Allah Almighty told the ego to fast, after putting it in fire and water, hot water, hot, hot temperatures and cold temperatures for a thousand years, the only thing that changed is when it came out and Allah had made it fast for a thousand years. He says, there's no God but you. So Allah Almighty says there's something about fasting if you but knew. If you but knew. If you're here for the love of your Lord, Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty will be with you with his love. There's nothing like it. That's what the goal is. We're seeking that love. He and the after woman, Allah Tafi Kapha. We took an oath, a promise to the Lord of the worlds, whose throne is over the heavens and the earth and everywhere and creates everything in between. What keeps us from making that kind of relationship? If we want saw the president or someone in a high position physically, we want to really be close to them and be loyal to them because of the respect they get from people. Yet the creator of the heavens and earth and everything between, we set our partners to him. We don't think about him. We don't remember him. We don't worship him. That's why we have difficulties. You want to remove your difficulties? Remove your idols. My sheikh told me, Allah raises rank, Sheikh Nazar. He says, after Rashid, when you make Hajj, Take your stone and say, oh Allah, I'm taking this stone in my hand, putting it in your hand, and I'm throwing this stone at the devil in me. We all have a devil in us, our ego. It's rebellious. That's what the devil is. Devil means rebellion. It's rebellious to Allah Almighty. That's what the devil is. Someone who's disobedient to Allah Almighty. How can we be disobedient to the creator that created us, that gives us everything, can give us anything in a blink of an eye, quicker than the president or our governor or our mayor or our employer, our husband, our wife, anybody. And yet we put all of these things before the creator. It doesn't make sense. So fasting gives us an opportunity for us to sit and spend some time with ourselves for the first time because you don't have a whole lot of doggone energy when you fast. And these are some long doggone <laughs> days. But how many of the easiest days? Amen. But they're still long days. <laughs> you still be smelling the burgers driving down the street and the pepper and, and where the cow was when they got the cow. Every, you know everything. Every season you smell, every season, season in there, and it's origin. <laughs> From the motherland. That's how sensitive you become to that. What about becoming that using that same sensitivity to connect to your Lord who's asking you to connect with him? So they may connect to you. Allah said, oh, what a beautiful fellowship I had with those who are all returning to me. 
this is this a bondage? This was Allah says they were all what a beautiful relationship he had with those who were off returning to him. Allah says this is a beautiful fellowship that I have with them. Allah well, say, hey, listen, a beautiful fellowship. In other words, they kicking it. They're interacting. They said, oh, Allah, what is this? Allah well, says, what, what do you think it is? Well, I don't know. I'm asking, oh, Allah, uh, uh, how do you bring the soul of, out the body? Allah well, said, are you doubting? No, I'm not doubting. I just want to know. Well, I says, okay, let me show you. Take okay. some birds and call. Allah mm. wants some fellowship with his creation. We're not allowing Allah to communicate with us, to fellowship with us. We see Allah as something like the sun or the dead is so far away from us. Allah says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein. Your jug this is your juggler vein right here. And your juggler vein is all under your skin up. And Allah says, I'm closer to you than your juggler vein. What? Hey, that's cool in the game. Allah, you that close? Hey, I'm straight. I ain't got no problem. You that close? I'm straight. What you want me to do? How you want me to do it? Allah says, okay, follow my rasul. You find who's keeping contact with that, that's what you do. Because they are walking and talking Quran. They can't say anything outside of Quran and Hadith. Do you think Allah, when the Prophet says, I'm in the latter days, I'm going to leave with you the Quran and my tradition, that he meant he's going to leave some books and some written, some written volumes of books? There were no, was no Quran when he was there. There was no written Quran. When the Caliphs didn't, didn't put the Quran together until 27 years after he passed away. So what they do in between the 27 years? They don't count. See, we don't think. Just like he received it through his heart, we got to receive it through our heart. And the way we get in our heart, we can't have no ego in the way that's an enemy to Allah Almighty. We can't have no falsehood in our way. We can't have no isms and schisms in our heart in order to receive. Speaking a language that they understand. How simple can we make that? What's our problem? What's our problem? I don't like her. I don't like him. He did this. He did. Oh, shh, you ain't ready yet. If you knew they was going to give him money, a million dollars at the bank, would you let anything stop you? Would somebody, somebody say something to you? Would that harm you? If somebody ran into the side of your car, you'd jump out and jump, catch a cat. <laughs> So obviously we don't know the value of who Allah is in us. He said, just remove that devil out you and I'm you in the higher paradise, wherever you are. And that's it. Fasting is one of the best things to do that because the ego don't like it. Because the ego is shut down like Satan. But if you don't Fast and do the things you need to do. You give it life. And it continues to stay in your way. It continues to post you out of the way. Post up on you. Dunk on you. Take from you. We don't get it. We don't get it. We ever get it. Rise up above ourselves and rise and rise against ourselves. You're going to find that it will be heaven and earth. It should be on heaven on earth as it is in heaven in you. Difficulties then will fall off your back like water off a duck's back. Now you become the, 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 the mercy and you become the warning and Allah makes you the raft. Because we don't have no effect on Allah. You think we hurt a lot? You think us believing a lot increases a lot? Do you think our not believing a lot decreases a lot, Almighty? The only ones affected are human beings. Allah 
Christ has given angels, I send angels to you. But human beings are affected by human beings. When the human beings get fed up and they say, oh, Lord, I can't take it, the wrath comes. When Moses' cousin accused him of adultery and Moses was so upset, he went to Elijah and said, oh, Lord, punish them. I said, you punish them. What is he saying? You got the power. It's up to you. I'm not fed up. You're fed up. Allah is most gracious, most merciful. Then Moses had said, Oh, earth, suck up Korah. Earth sucked him up. He said out to Moses, Forgive me, oh, cousin, 70 times. Seven. Then after that, Allah spoke to him and says, O Musa, Korah asked you 70 times for forgiveness. And you let the earth suck him up. If he would have asked me once, I would have forgiven him. He said, if you ever do that again, I'll erase your name from the list, from the scrolls of prophethood. That's who Allah is. That's who Allah is. That's who Allah is. And you setting up partners to Allah, man. And Moses will suck, make you make that earth suck you up. And this is Ramadan. Allah is opening up the heavens to you and me. And you sit idly by and wait. And say, I can't wait till Ramadan is over. So I can eat and drink what I want to. So I can get my high pots, kick some more. So I can be humiliated more. So I can be disrespected more. Something wrong. You don't know where you are, therefore you don't know who you are. And you may be taken anywhere. Still not enough. This is an opportunity. Ramadan now is just about half over now. Don't you know Ramadan is like is, is, a, is a specific favor that Allah Almighty has created that comes for the whole doggone seven billion people and any good that you're doing Allah Almighty gives it 70 more credit to you you have the opportunity to get 83 years of worship one night worship. Which of the favors of your Lord were you doing? We don't know a lot, man, because we don't know ourselves. When you know yourself, you know your Lord. That's somebody to worship. That's somebody to love. That's somebody to be committed to. That's somebody to obey. And don't let nothing stand in the way of your obedience to a law. You'll find that Allah Almighty will establish you in strength and power in the land, and you'll be living a life, the real high life, not the real high life, but the real high life. When everybody else is going through all what they're going through, those people, they only have to ask, oh, Allah, boom. Even if they don't ask, Allah is sending them. They are on their purpose. They are on their divine order. They are on the promise that they made to Allah. Therefore, Allah says, I'm going to keep my promise to you. You keep your promise to me, I will keep my promise to you. And Allah never goes against his promise. So my advice, to, first of all, to myself and to you, is to reconnect to your Lord through the means that Allah Almighty has sent to us to connect to him. And be with those whom Allah Almighty is with. Because Allah Almighty sends them to bring us to Him. That's it. Don't let your ego cheat you out of the way, out the box. Don't die stupid. Don't die stupid. Allah didn't create us to be stupid. Don't die that way. Allah said, don't die unless you're coming back with a cow and saline. 
with a tranquil heart that you are pleased with your Lord and your Lord is pleased with you. Elijah says, don't come back. Why are you saying that? Because it's going to be hella fine. You don't want to come back like this. Whatever you got to do to clean your act up, do it before you come here. As long as you got breath, when that soul comes, that's another opportunity. Don't let your ego trick you. You don't blame it on Satan. Satan has no power. Don't blame it on Shaitan. You can only blame it on yourself. See, because Allah Almighty is not going to punish Shaitan because of what we did. Because we only listen. So we're asking Allah Almighty, please Allah, don't let us die stupid. Amen. Let us die with a Calvin, Calvin Salim. Let us die as Muslims. Submit our will to Allah Almighty. Amen. That Allah Almighty is well pleased with us. And that Allah Almighty accepts our Ramadan no matter what we do or how weak we are to strengthen our witnesses. Amen. And bring us the value to our hearts and our minds and our being. So we know the value of this month. And let us make this last few days let's like a bat out of hell. Because that's what it is. It's the opportunity to be like a bat out of hell Ramadan. Amen. It's a brother came from across the, uh, this here is coming across from the East Coast from D.C. He's coming only for uh, giving his uh, his allegiance before we do the sunnahs because this is very, very powerful and we don't want to neglect and, and someone to leave and, and not get benefit from this. So, Brother Musa, you come up so we can connect your heart and connect our hearts too to Allah Almighty and to our promise to Allah so that we may, our Ramadan may be accepted here in the afternoon. Ashadu! Ashadu! An! An! La! La! Illa Han! Illa Allah! Wa Ashadu! Wa Ashadu! Anna! Anna! Muhammadan! Muhammadan! Rasulullah! Rasulullah! Ashadu! Ashadu! An! An! La! La! Illa Han! Illa Allah! Wa Ashadu! Wa Ashadu! Anna! Anna! Muhammadan! Muhammadan! Rasulullah! Rasulullah! Ashadu! Ashadu! An! La! Illa Han!